And, and let me begin by acknowledging that although all of us have been feeling pain, uncertainty, disruption, uh, some folks have been feeling it more than others. Uh, most of all, uh, the pain that's been experienced by the families of uh, George and Brianna and Ahmad and Tony and Sean and too many others uh, to mention, uh, those that we uh, thought about during that, that moment of silence. Uh, and to those families who've been directly affected by tragedy, uh, please know that Michelle and I and the nation grieve with you, hold you in our prayers. Uh, we're committed to the fight of creating a more just nation in, in memory of your sons and daughters. Uh, and we can't forget that even as we're confronting uh, the particular acts of violence that uh, led to those losses, uh, our nation and the world is still in the midst of a global pandemic that's exposed the, the vulnerabilities of our healthcare system, uh, but also the disparate treatment and as a consequence, the disparate impact uh, that exists in our healthcare system, uh, the unequal investment, the biases that have led to a disproportionate number of infections and loss of life in uh, communities of color. So uh, in a lot of ways, what has happened over the last several weeks is uh, challenges and structural problems here in the United States uh, have been thrown into high relief. Uh, they're the outcomes, not just of you know, the immediate moments in time, but uh, they're the result of a long history of slavery and Jim Crow and redlining and institutionalized uh, racism that uh, too often have been uh, the plague, the original sin of our society. Um, and in some ways, as tragic as these past few weeks have been, as difficult and scary and uncertain as they've been, uh, they've also been an incredible opportunity for people to be uh, awakened to some of these underlying trends. And they offer an opportunity for us to all work together to tackle them, to take them on, to change uh, America and, and make it live up to its highest ideals. Uh, and part of what's made me so hopeful is the fact that so many young people have been galvanized and activated and motivated and mobilized. Uh, because historically, so much of the progress that we've made in our society uh, has been because of young people. Dr. King was a young man when he got involved. Cesar Chavez was a young man. Malcolm X was a young man. The, the leaders of the feminist movement were, were young people. Leaders of union movements were, were young people. The leaders of the environmental movement in this country and the movement to make sure that uh, the LGBT community uh, finally had a voice and uh, was represented were young people. And so when I want, when, when sometimes I feel despair, I just see what's happening with young people all across the country and the talent and the voice and the sophistication that they're displaying. And it makes me feel optimistic. Uh, it makes me feel as if, you know, this country is going to get better. Uh, 